Hello and welcome back to coverage of the development of World Turtles. I'm very excited about today's video. World Turtles was always going to include different climate and weather effects as the turtle visits different parts of space. But I've been wondering how to elegantly handle these changes visually using terrain textures for a while. I think I found a big part of the solution. If we go all the way back to Catli Coding's original terrain shader, the most important bits for today's video are the following. Firstly, the shader takes a texture array as input. This contains all the possible textures you'd want to render as part of the terrain. Secondly, each hex gets assigned one of these terrain textures by setting its terrain type index. This data is sent to the GPU using a global texture. Instead of using the colors of the global texture as colors for rendering, we're using each pixel as a collection of information about a hex. In this case, we're using the red, green and blue channels for the hex's explored status, visible status and whether it's currently busy lerping between displays. The alpha channel is used to store the index represented by the hex's terrain type in the shader's texture array. The shader then accesses these bits of information to decide how to render each pixel of the hex. Thirdly, where neighboring hexes are connected, a weighted average between two or three hexes are calculated, so that the hexes blend into each other better. And finally, it is also possible to overlay a hex grid onto the terrain using a separate grid texture, which is just switched on or off. And that's the basis of Jasper's terrain shader. Now, over the last year or so, I've added some extra functionality to the shader. Firstly, I added many more textures to allow slight variations. For example, grass next to water is greener than normal, while grass far away from water is slightly duller. Secondly, I added support for adding normals to the terrain, so it looks like there's a bit of, well, texture in the texture. Thirdly, I added a noise texture that is used to simulate cloud shadows on the terrain by scrolling through the texture and darkening patches of the terrain corresponding to the noise profile. These additions were covered in the video linked to in the top right, so check it out if you've missed it. Today we're adding another very impactful piece to the terrain shader, which will be very helpful in visualizing all kinds of terrain and climate changes. Instead of each hex being associated with a single terrain type, will allow up to three terrain types to be associated with the hex. We do this by sending another global texture to the GPU, which contains the information for the extra two textures, namely the index as before, and the weight that should be applied to the extra texture. So each extra texture requires two bytes, which means we can add both of them in one global texture, using the red and green channels for the first extra texture and the blue and alpha channels for the second one. We now create a few methods very similar to those of the primary texture to allow us access to the two extra textures. The bulk of what remains is to combine the three textures based on the weights, including where the hexes connect with neighbors. I've decided to first combine the primary and secondary textures and then combine the result with the final texture. The reason for this choice is rooted in how these two extra textures will be practically utilized. What's very exciting about these two extra textures is that, while we could use it for any combination of three textures we'd like, there are already two very practical situations in which it can be used, linked closely to the existing map generation process. As we'll see, we can get a striking visual impact with very little change to the map generation process, since it already simulates moisture and temperature for each hex. Let's see how we can let our terrain visually adjust to droughts and ice ages using the two extra textures per hex. The map generation process already simulates moisture and temperature as factors to determine how the terrain types should be allocated. At that point, we can easily assign some additional textures and weights. First off, we assign a sandy second texture to all grass hexes and set its weight such that a high moisture content leads to lower drought impact while low moisture content leads to a bigger visual adjustment in times of drought. Next, we set the snowy texture as the third texture for all map hexes, such that lower temperatures experience bigger impacts in an ice age. 
And just like that, we have some very powerful visual variety in our terrain. We can let grass dry out gradually as water levels drop, and let it spring back to life when it rains. We can also let the coldest places become increasingly snowy as it gets colder overall. Everything you see here happens in-game, with no video editing or blending outside of the game itself. There are a few parameters I haven't mentioned that we use to tweak or calibrate the look that we want to achieve. First off, we can set the minimum weight level at which an impact should start showing. This is useful for allowing up to a certain weight to count as zero, leaving some unaffected areas. For example, if we don't want the entire map to be covered in snow. The next parameter is the weight at which the full impact should be applied. Lowering this means the gradient of the impact increases, so you get larger areas with full visual impact, or equivalently, a faster shift from minimum impact to maximum impact on the terrain. The final parameter is the overall adjustment strength for the entire map, which alters the impact for all hexes at once. Tweaking these parameters gives us some very striking visual tools to make the game more immersive, and also make coupling some of the game mechanics to weather conditions and climate changes a lot more viable. Man, there could be many more situations, especially more locally, where gradual adjustments to terrain textures could be useful. Also, we don't need a lot of different textures, since we can create variety by blending them together with different weights. Now, you may have noticed that only the terrain gets adjusted. The trees, rocks and buildings are not rendered using the terrain shader, so they stand out in the snow. I will have to think of different ways of getting the stuff on the terrain to play along, but I already have some ideas. For now, get ready to properly steer your world turtle around in space to prevent droughts and ice ages. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel to be a part of the journey. Goodbye!